I work at a public library. It's the title that started off as a blog by librarian Gina Sheridan about funny occurrences taking place at the public library where she worked. Well, she transformed that idea and those entries into a book, and now she's with us in studio to talk more about it. Join us next on City Corner. Sarah Thompson and welcome to City Corner. I have a guest today um, on our show who I've wanted to have for so long. Her name's Gina Sheridan. She's a librarian and an author who has written this very, very funny book called I Work at a Public Library because she does work at a public library, but I absolutely love this. I read about you, I think it was about a year ago or so, and I said, she's got to be on this show. And so I'm so glad you're here so we could talk about your book. I want to quickly get in and set the stage for everyone at home. We've got a graphic to throw up. It's GinaSheridan.com. It's your website. And this is kind of, you have sort of like rebranded the 21st century librarian, because here we are looking at your site. But from this, it gets to a Tumblr page, your Twitter, your Twitter page, Facebook, and then this book, I work at a public library. Tell me about how this all came about and sort of who you are and what all of this is. Well, I'm just a public librarian <laughs> who, um, I started out as a public librarian in California um, after library school and just noticed um, all the wonderful characters that come into the library and wanted to um, record the funny things and the touching things that happened in the library. And it was all for myself. I um, started um, a Tumblr just actually to try out the new um, platform. And, um, and so it was just for me. And then I started sharing the link with friends who work in libraries. <laughs> and then they started sharing the link. And then it just kind of went from there. And then it turned into, and then here we have the book. We've got them on set. I've got my copy here. And we've got some photos as well of when, you know, you first get the, the there it is, the, the cover. I work at a public library. How did, what's the evolution of going from the blogs and everyone following you and saying, Gina, this is really good stuff to having literally a published book? <laughs> Well, it's really funny because um, the book is kind of, uh, it was just a lucky thing that happened. Um, I hadn't logged into my Twitter account in several months. And when I had, um, I noticed uh, a tweet from an agent. And she said, hey, email me. I'm interested in, um, in talking with you about your blog. And I first I thought it was spam. Like I was like, no, I don't know about this. And I just happened to mention it to my husband, Travis. And he, he, he actually looked into it. I should do that because I'm a librarian. But he looked into it. And he's like, no, I think this is legit. And um, I, I phoned her. And we talked and signed over the phone. And, um, and she found me a publisher relatively quickly. And it was just sort of a fluke. And there's your book. There we've got the photo of. Um, and this is probably in the marketing of the book. The, I, th this, I love it. I love how you use the Dewey Decimal System and like your chapter headers. And it's just so, 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 I mean, it really, everything is so well thought out. Explain what this is. I thought this was pretty funny. <laughs> well, um, these are postcards, um, little bundles of postcards that we had made up. Um, and they're some illustrations that a friend had made of some of the popular posts on the blog. And so um, we decided to make them into postcards and give them away. And, um, and people really like them. <laughs> and what's funny, well, about this is it's based on someone coming up saying I want to open up my get a library card and you say I need to see ID and they show you is it a sex offender card yes so, yeah and this is real stuff happening yeah. to you on pretty much a daily basis yes and you just got to keep a straight face and smile and treat everyone you know equally so well to give people an idea I pulled some excerpts from the book so we could really give people um, an idea and I've got my copy here so I thought we'd start with the chapter you have one um, on computers so this is a chapter on computers, and this one's Composers We Are All. And it's talks. you say a man waves you over and says, 
I, um, yeah, I'm inside my new email address. How do I write a letter? You say, do you mean you'd like to write a message to someone? See this button that says compose? Go ahead and click on that. Compose? Oh, OK. I thought that was for people who wanted to write songs. <laughs> Composers, you know. It's amazing what you can do online these days. I mean, this is stuff that's happening to you all the time. I imagine the tech technology side, the computer side, is probably the funniest oh, part. Yes. Yeah. Um, you know, there are tons of people that come to the library and rely on our computers, and um, that's how they are online. And we have free computer classes and, um, and lots of one-on-one -on -one help that we give people. Um, and there's just, I mean, some people come in and they are um, very savvy, and some people aren't so much. And we just, you know, help as much as we can. Well, I have another one um, that, we, that we have a copy of, Facebook Working. This is page 19 in the book. And this is saying, hi there, doll. Do you happen to know how to work Facebook? You say, yes, I do. What do you need help with? I need to find a Romanian woman I met last night. Her name is Ella. And she was from out of town. Me, right. Do you know her full name or where she's from? Patron. No, I just needed you to bring up the full list of all the Ellas <laughs> on Facebook. Uh, sir, I think you might be underestimating how many people there are on Facebook and how popular a name like that is or Ella is oh, okay I'll just keep looking I mean it's is it what do you think it is about like with is, is it because the public library is it's a public space and yeah. so everyone's kind of coming there to utilize not just the books but the technology and just get all sorts of information and oh yeah and we have people I mean I've had more than one person come up and ask for the Facebook like they want the book <laughs> that is Facebook. everyone's talking about they want Facebook <laughs> And, and I have to say? explain. Okay, well, here is the here is the site, and I just show them. You know, you just treat. You don't never laugh. Like it yeah. is. You know, you just have to. Okay, this is the site, and this is what it's about, and you can sign up, and it's free, and we have a class on it coming up next month, and. You just, I mean, people are learning every day. And you just so. go through it. Again, I think that's a get, because the space, because of public library, it's like you're bringing, it's just, a, it's an epicenter for such a, a wide mix of people. Oh, yeah. And so to your point, it's not that it's intentionally funny. You just happen to have a higher rate of occurrences of things that are just kind of odd, you yeah. know, quirky. Yes. And um, my, my biggest thing about the tone of the book and the blog is that it's very um, objective. Mm -hmm. This is what happened at the library today. Right. It's n not judgmental. It's not to be. Um, meaning to be venting or um, or you know making and, fun in any way. So right. I think no, that's it's important. Just really, what happened, and we're going to get to that because it's not just the humor. The humor yeah. is kind of what pulls you in initially to keep turning the pages. You're like, I can't believe this happened. But <laughs> what you come to see later on in the chapters is there's some really tearful, you know, tear jerking, I should say, moments yes. uh, that are just quite touching. I did want to talk on this. This is one in chapter three um, under reading interest. The chapter reading interests and habits and titles questionable book and these are incorrect book titles tell me how catcher in the wind catch 22 <laughs> in the rye what is this people coming in and saying i'm looking for lord of the flies by tolkien or like mm -hmm. are they searching it on a computer well so i i always tell my staff and i mean this very um very kindly um never trust the patrons because they mean so well but usually um they've got something wrong even right. if they're sure that they have it right and so um, whenever someone asks for a book, I'm, you know, you don't say, oh, this is, this is the book you're looking for, not this one. Um, but just very kindly, could you mean this book? Right. And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah. The or diary you show of them, yeah, you show them the cover and, oh, yes, this is the book. OK. And you just act like that's what they asked for. <laughs> so they know that the diary of Aunt Frank oh, is really hand Frank. That's my favorite but one. <laughs> yeah, no, I think it's, I mean, it's, it's not to your point. I mean, you know, it's, 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 it's funny and it's cute, but it's, it's you're not intentionally putting it out there no. to say, hey, I'm making fun of this person as mm -hmm. much as this is just what goes on into a library. Well, let's get into um, one of the ones, another one we pulled um, is listening in. Because I always wonder when you're at the library, mm -hmm. do the librarians really, <laughs> do you listen in to people talking? Well, you, you can't help but, um, but overhear a lot of the time. <laughs> so um, we are not eavesdropping on you and we will, you know, we're not going to tell your secrets or anything, but, um, but yes, yeah, so we have, we have a lot to hear at the library. All right. So let's, this one is, um, so library locked in. So this is funny. This is one, an exchange of librarians saying, oops, I just found out we locked someone in the library <laughs> the other night. I'm glad it wasn't my night to close. Librarian too. That was like my secret dream when I was a kid. It's probably not as fun as I thought it would be. Librarian one, especially for this poor lady, she was locked in the lobby. Nothing here. 
But tax forms. Yes. I know you keep this pretty anonymous. Did this happen to you? Were, were you the one who locked the library, locked someone in? So I did not. Thankfully, I've never locked anyone in the library. Um, but this was actually between two of my coworkers. So. <laughs> So, did, so this is one of the, in here in St. Louis? Because I know you worked at a library back, you can't say, we won't I, say. Yeah. We won't say, we won't say. I don't want to say. say. Um, I want to jump ahead to, um, so you have this, a chapter, tell me why you have a chapter about bullying. Um, well, titled bullying, yeah, let's put it so, in that way. Yeah, and, so, and originally I think it was library bullies. Um, so as you can imagine, anywhere, working retail or at the post office or, or wherever, you get customers who um, aren't in the greatest mood. Maybe they just heard some bad news or um, they're just not with it today. Um, but um, so so these are the stories of, um, of those customers, you know, how we deal with customers who aren't at their greatest. Okay. No, I thought we have one. I'm going to pull that up before um, before we cut out to break called Lip Expecting. Um, and I don't know if you want to read this one. I've got the book. If you want to take a chance and read this one. Sure. But I'd love to hear about this one because, of course, this gets into tax dollars. Yes. Um, a man asked to speak with the person in charge. How can I help you, sir? Man, I'm a taxpayer and your door is broken and all of my money is going right out the door with the air conditioning. <laughs> oh, my. Let's go take a, a look. And then I fix the door. There we go. All better. It looks like someone bumped into it, maybe. You fixed it? Yeah. Well, I'm <laughs> glad I said something. Most people wouldn't say anything, you know. I was going to write to my congressman if you gave me any lip, but you were very nice. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> I, so I imagine you get a lot of that, do you? Because yes. this is like, my tax dollars are going. What are some oh, of yeah. the things that people say to you? Oh, um, it, the, the air is too cold in here. Um, it's too warm in here. Um, are, are you paying the heating bill with my tax dollars? Um, this person's uh, being too noisy, and these are my tax dollars. They should be quiet. Um, those kinds of things. So. so that's pretty funny. Well, we're going to have to take a quick break. When we come back, I do want to say that, because the last part I want you to read, I pulled um, two excerpts that are about sort of the touching things. Mm -hmm. And it, before, you, before we cut off to break, tell me about that side of stuff. Because you can have moments, I'm sure, that really touch your heart when you're working day to day oh, at yeah. the library. So um, working at the library is the most gratifying thing ever, because um, you're always helping people, so you're always getting thanks every single day. Um, I think I get the I think I get more thanks than people get in a week, mm -hmm. and so um, and the touching thing. My staff makes fun of me because I cry a lot. <laughs> I just like I, these things really touch my heart when they happen um, and they mean a lot to me so it was important to me that that was captured in the book as well mm -hmm. um, and there's a, a, um, a tag on my blog called volumes of gratitude those are those stories that are those are those touching. stories well we're yeah. actually going to hear more of those stories uh, when we return with Gina Sheridan stick with us here on City Corner Unless we work together, it's how we play our best. It's how we survive on the field. Now that same teamwork can save 13 million people affected by the famine, war, and drought in the Horn of Africa. Go to this site and forward the facts to everyone you know. The more people who know, the more money we can raise. And the more money we raise, the more people we can help. Because saving lives doesn't take a lot. It just takes a lot of us. You realize that 49 million Americans struggle with hunger? That's one out of every six Americans. These people are around us every day. They're our friends, they're our coworkers, their kids go to school with our kids. Sometimes we're not even aware that they're struggling. This problem is closer than you think. So is the solution. 
play a role in ending hunger. Visit feedingamerica.org slash hunger and find your local food bank. So, you're looking for help with your mortgage. Worried about foreclosure? We can help you keep your house. All we ask for in return is that you submit to our plans for galactic domination. <laughs> Sign. If you're facing foreclosure, talk to the right people. Speak with HUD approved housing counselors free of charge at 888 995 HOPE. I'm Sarah Thompson and welcome back to City Corner. Today I'm joined by librarian and author Gina Sheridan and we've been talking about uh, her book, I Work at a Public Library. A collection, a collection of <laughs> anecdotes and stories and happenings from, from your experience working in the public library. When we left off, we've been talking about the, some of the things that would probably go under humor and what's quite funny and funny um, happenings, but there's also the touching elements and I wanted you to read one that's probably a favorite of yours um, and this is in your chapter 12, volume of gratitude. Yes. So this book is called, or this um, story is called Smaller Books. I once helped a family new to the United States get library cards. After giving them an overview about the library, I showed the kids the children's area. The mother told them they could each check out two books. The smallest child, a girl of seven, picked out two small board books meant for babies. Are you sure you don't want any picture books? And I show her a, new few, t a few titles that are on display. Too much money. The girl said, what do you mean? These cost less, right? Smaller. And then I realized she was trying to save her parents money by choosing the smallest books. Do you know what? All of this is free, no money. You can choose whichever books you want. She turned her head to look at the shelves and shelves of books and quietly gasped. She wandered away without another word and I watched her pick up book after book, shuffling through each one, making little piles and studying each one intently, caught up in the wonder of the bounty. Oh. <laughs> That's really wonderful. I mean, it's because when you think about it too, it's like, again, that like someone thinks because it's a smaller book, it might be less money. But at the library, there is this kind of egalitarian, like everyone's equal. You can anyone can check out a book. You can access knowledge anyone can and that's what's so great about it yeah you can wait on a state senator on his lunch break you can <laughs> wait on you know someone who doesn't have a home and help them get services they need um, it, it truly is for everyone well speaking of which we've uh, got ahead and we're gonna jump to this this is a photo of you <laughs> at uh, this is called the little free library yes. is that the little free library tell me about this so uh, Little Free Library is an organization um, that's worldwide now, um, and I decided to start one in my neighborhood of Old North St. Louis. Um, we are between two of the St. Louis public libraries, about a mile and a half um, between each, and um, and the, the kids need, it's important for kids to have books and own books. and. Um, and so um, I had the idea of having this in the neighborhood, but I don't know how to like build anything. <laughs> and so I had a, a neighbor who is a sculptor build um, the Little Free Library out of an old safe that he found at a junk store. Um, and then my friend made the, um, the logo for it. Another neighbor made the door, the metal door. Um, and the kids absolutely love it. This morning I was at my neighborhood coffee shop and a kid came up to me and said, hey, are you the library lady? And I was like, yeah. And she asked for a particular book, uh -huh. um, and, and she asked, could it be put in the library? Uh -huh. And so I'm like, yes, if a kid asks me for a book, I will get you that book. <laughs> and so you find, do you see a lot that the kids are using it, oh, people yeah. in the neighborhood? Yeah, and, and the, the main um, motto for Little Free Library is take a book, leave a book. Okay. But ours is a little different. It's take one and pass it on. Um, or keep it if you really love it. And mm -hmm. I tell the kids, um, if you don't love it, give it to an enemy because um, we just want them out in the world. And uh, some kids bring them back, some kids donate, some that they're, you know, they've outgrown. But, mm -hmm. And it's for adults too. We have a shelf for adults and a shelf for kids. I, I think what's so sort of like captivating, really, it really <laughs> is about, because you think about a librarian and it's like, oh, you work at a public library and someone might dismiss that. Assume you're a book lover, a writer, um, or you, you've studied library science, which you have, but really you've kind of like rebranded. I want to throw up a picture of your, um, of your Twitter page. And again, you've got your 
Tumblr site, you've got your Facebook and your like followers on Twitter and you really are this like hip, cool, you know, sort of 21st century librarian. And, you know, I, I pulled some of the snapshots of just what's on your Twitter page and I just wanted to like, we'll throw some of them up. I think one of them, you mentioned your husband, you do public readings and I just feel that you're kind of making, you probably really influence people a lot in terms of what they not only choose to read, but just how they think about literature and let's look at this one what's tell me how, why this is was up there so this is hilarious because people always um, have this idea that it's either ebooks or print books like you you like one or the other and one is less than the other but um, but they're the same we just want you reading we offer both <laughs> it's okay you can um, you can have your ebooks you can have your print books you can do both it's fine so that's what that cartoon is um, is you know people are afraid that ebooks are um, are going to erase libraries, and that's absolutely not the case. Yeah, yeah. The library already, already, always seems to find a way to stay, oh, yeah. to stay relevant. I thought this was funny too. Is this something that you and your colleagues talk about? Do you have you ever been shushed by a <laughs> oh patron? <my> <laughs> yes, I absolutely have. And whenever I do get shushed, like one one guy came up to the desk and his cell phone was ringing, but he didn't realize it was his cell phone. Uh -huh. And um, so I just tried to ignore it. And I was talking to him, and and he said, you know, it's really rude to have your cell phone on at work. <laughs> And I said, oh, I'm sorry, sir, but I think that's yours. That's coming from your pocket. And uh, we laughed about it. And I said, I, th I think it'd be fun if you told your friends that you shushed a librarian today. And, um, and he got a kick out of that. But that wasn't the only time I've ever been shushed. <laughs> <laughs> Is that why you posted that one yes, on Twitter? We, yeah, we don't like to shush people, but um, sometimes we are, are a little too rambunctious at the library, I yeah. think. <laughs> yeah. well, like, so I think this is funny, because at this point, <laughs> everyone has Googled themselves, we think. But librarians are, <laughs> are hiding something. <laughs> so did you find this on your own and screenshot it, or did you somebody else do this and you yes. just reposted it? I think I did it myself. I can't remember. It's been a while. Um, but. Um, uh, or I think I got the idea and then I typed it in. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, I just think it's hilarious because um, librarians have like very specific ideas about themselves, I think. And, um, and you know, there's the, you know, there's all the stereotypes that we're cool or hip or nerdy or whatever. And uh -huh. I just think it's, it's funny. So what, so <laughs> like when you really think about it, tell me about some of, in your profession out, you know, how long you've been doing this, the types of people you work with. I mean, you clearly are very creative and, you know, <laughs> with your work, very clever, but, and I know you all the stereotypes, but tell me about more about the, your colleagues and who you work with. Well, libraries um, have um, very low turnover. People love to work at the library. It is a great place to work. If I post a job posting for an opening at my library, I'll get at least 100 applicants hmm. um, for an entry-level position. Um, and and I, why is that? I, 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 it's just so wonderful. Well, some people have the mistaken idea that libraries are quiet and, you know, it's a nice, calm part-time job. But really, um, we're bustling these days. It's, I mean, we, we have people coming in all day, every day. Each library is different. Our, um, the one that I work at in Clayton is busy during the lunch hour. People coming mm -hmm. in from work. And, um, but it is not a quiet place to work um, or be <laughs> anymore. So, um, so yeah, people just love working there. There uh, obviously are book lovers. Um, uh -huh. One thing we hear a lot is, you must love to read. Well, <laughs> OK, yes. <laughs> but we also love to find people information and all, all sorts of things. So. All right, well, let's continue on with um, some of the other uh, shots that we have of some things that you've posted. I think there's a t-shirt, which is, um, so this is cute. I mean, a lot of times, so when you're posting these things, so this one's obviously encouraging people to get a library card. Are you doing it? Is it Gina, the librarian, or just Gina, this is who I am? or is it all in one at this point? Well, I'm, I'm pretty transparent online. Um, I do have my personal pages, um, but whenever I want to talk about libraries, um, I try to post it on the I work at a public library page mm -hmm. um, because I don't want to annoy my friends to death. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so most of it, I mean, it's stuff that I, or it's stuff that I'll share on both the personal mm -hmm. and the um, the books page, so yeah. I thought it was cool. You have the at Christmas. It looks like you made a Christmas tree oh, yeah. out of books. Those are really um, Is that is? Do you guys do you and your husband do this for every yes. annually for this, every Christmas? This past year we did not do it, um, mostly because most of those books ended up in the little free library, <laughs> so we didn't have so many laying around. Um, but yeah, so that's something that we do instead of having a real tree because we have cats and they will climb up in the tree. So no, I think it's a great idea. And the last one um, that we have, it's unboard. It's a you posted something about a book called Unboard and 
think you commented, um, oh, this is, I thought this was funny. This isn't on board, but this is the dirty look. You found this, what, tell me about this. Um, well, there's a lot of these um, book covers and, and funny books about librarians um, all over the internet. So this one I didn't actually have in my hand. I found it online and shared it. <laughs> but people love when you share stuff like this. They, they just think it's hilarious. This is great. It looks like something you'd find at like a garage sale. Yeah. But the one that I have, um, that we have next, it's actually one that you recommend. I think you were saying, mm -hmm. um, you posted it, um, saying it was a good book. And that, I, the reason I threw that in there is I think it's a great segue into your second book that's coming out. When is this coming out? What's the title of it? So August 1st is the release date and it's called Check These Out. And it's um, a book of book lists. Um, so basically book recommendations um, from me. So there's about 15 chapters and about um, a dozen books per chapter um, on my favorite genres. So, and they're kind of random. Like one is called Southern Discomfort and it's <laughs> um, spooky Southern reads. Um, okay. So like Flannery O'Connor and things like that. Um, um, and then books, uh, what was it, Too Cool for School, I think, is one of the chapters. And it's um, books you should have been assigned in school, but maybe weren't because <laughs> your teacher wasn't hip enough to, um, to pick that title and went with Hemingway instead. Right, the so, summer reading you never got. Yeah, That's yeah. great. No, that's, I love, that's great. That's great. That's so <laughs> clever. So 200 um, books that you've all read. When yes. do you find the time Ugh. to read so this, much? This one was a lot more work than I work at a public library. <laughs> um, I'm still in the editing phase. Um, um, but um, yeah, it was it was a lot of work picking um, my 200 favorite books, um, and sh and having to write about each one and what they mean to me. Um, really, I mean, and they're all books that I have read at one point or the other. But it, um, for this book, I had each one of them. Um, in my hand before mm -hmm. I actually decided. And some of them I changed my mind on. I was <laughs> like, oh, this isn't what, how I remember it. So that one, you know, got out. But um, but yeah, so hopefully um, people like my recommendations. And even if they don't, I want to hear their rants about it because then we'll be, you know, we're still talking about books and, and that's what I think is So really we'll check important. these out. Be, will people be able to post about it on I Work at a Library or are you going to do something totally different I with that? I have to figure that out now. <laughs> um, before that comes out, I'll, uh, I'll have a plan in mind. Um, but in the book, um, um, there's going to be um, little um, check mark boxes ne next to each title and then a complete one online so that if you do check it out from the library, you're not writing in the library book. Before we go, I have to ask you, I should have probably asked you this when you were reading before, do you have a favorite, is there a favorite um, excerpt in your book or pa favorite posting? I don't know if we have time to read it, but just tell me which one that is. Um, I won't read it but because I'll start crying, but it's the very last one in the book. Um, it's also online and it's called Donut Guy. Okay. Um, that one's just near and dear to my heart, and it happened to me in California. Okay, well, that, that's, that's a good <laughs> cliffhanger for people to go out and get the book, Donut Guy, the last page mm -hmm. in the book. Thank you so much for being here. I feel like I could talk to you for, like, hours, but I absolutely <laughs> love this. I think it's great work. I can't read, wait to read your next book. Thank you. And thank you again for being here. And if you want more information um, about Gina's work, you can head to her website, ginasheridan.com. That actually takes you to all her different Twitter, Tumblr, all the different sites that she has. has I work at a public library.com is her Tumblr page, though. So again, check that out, and you can actually get and read excerpts from the book. Um, and there are the two books. I work at a public library that's available now. You can also check it out at your library <laughs> and check these out, which is coming out. When is that coming out again? August. And I do want to mention, you said that they're not just at Amazon, but also available at local um, independent books, um, booksellers and Barnes & Noble. Um, can get, can get you them too. Okay. So. All right, great. Thank you so much thank for being you. here. It's been a pleasure. Thank you again. And thank you at home for watching City Corner. And please keep it right here on STL TV Experience St. Louis.